What's good, Switch? It's your boy, Vance, and welcome to Switch Bowl. I don't know if this is your first time here. You've been coming for a long time, but I am so glad that you are here tonight. Now, you're probably saying, Vince, what is happening? I thought Switch Bowl was like, maybe we're talking about commercials. Maybe we're analyzing big game film. No, tonight we're talking about your favorite. Yes, that's right. Your favorite big game food. And what's my favorite big game food? Cereal. Like, who doesn't love cereal? Man, it's great for breakfast, lunch, dinner, middle of the night snack, first thing in the morning snack, afternoon snack. You can eat cereal from a big bowl where you pour out almost all of it, right? And I don't know, like, if you're like a brave person who's like whole milk, maybe you are 2%. Maybe you are just super healthy and conscious, and I don't know why you would eat oat milk with your cereal, but hey, maybe that's you. Or maybe you like to eat your cereal like OBJ out of a shoe, right? Like, it's just in there, just shoe. Oh, look. And then back in the day, I don't know if you know this, but there used to be prizes in cereal. So here's what you need to know. Man, today, as we dive into Switch Bowl, I believe we can learn a lot when we look at it from perspective. Hey, when it comes to one of our favorite breakfast foods, which is cereal. We can see the surprises that God has in store for us. When we learn about their daily nutritional uptake that's important for us to be a part of. And a little special surprise, we're gonna be talking about soap as well. I don't know if you're a body wash person or a body bar person, whatever it is. We'll get to that and we'll dive in. So let's go ahead and hop in right now. As much as I love cereal and I could eat it for every single meal, here's the truth. Man does not live by cereal alone. Uh, Matthew 4, 1 through 4 tells us this. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights, he fasted and became very hungry. During that time, the devil came to him and said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus told him, no, the scriptures say, people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Imagine this, that the son of God, the creator, the heaven and the universe is letting us know that not even he, somebody can live by bread, by food alone, by the words of God. It's important that for us that we find ourselves reading our Bible on a regular basis. Because when the enemy comes to attack, and the enemy will come to attack, if you do not know God's word, if you're not regularly reading God's word, if you're not in God's word, then how will you know how to combat, to come against the attacks of the enemy? How will you know how to help your friends? How will you know how to pray for your friends when they are having bad days, when things aren't going the best for them, if you're not in God's word. It's important that we get our daily food, whatever your favorite food may be. But we simply just cannot live by cereal alone. The next point, part of your daily nutrition. Second Timothy 3, 15 through 17 says this, you have been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood and they have given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us what to do is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. As followers of Christ, as we continue to grow in our faith, as we continue to understand who God is in our lives, as we continue to grow closer to God, how can we do that if we just simply ignore one of the greatest tools, greatest resources, a love letter that he's given to us to help us walk it out in our daily faith? Now, I, I don't know who your favorite athlete may be. Maybe it's Messi, maybe it's LeBron James, but this is what I know about these great athletes is that they practice almost daily. And as a follower of Christ, we want to make sure that we're intentional, that we practice daily. And part of practicing is spending time taking in and reading God's word and let it be correction to us, letting it be inspiration to us, letting it be truth to us. Because here's the deal. At the end of the day, if you find yourself not eating for a while, your body will begin to lack in nutrition. In the same way, you need to feed your spirit and your soul with God's word. And lastly, 
there's a special prize inside. Now, here's the deal. You guys are cheated, greatly cheated. Back in my day, cereal had prizes inside of it. It could be like ring pops. It could be Dakota rings. It could be whatever. Matter of fact, you talked your parents into buying the cereal just to rip open the box and get the special prize inside. Nowadays, the only thing in a box of cereal is cereal. Now, that's good because we know we love cereal. But it's the same thing in Scripture. When you find yourself diving into it, you'll see the special prizes inside. Psalms 1, 2 through 3 says this, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They're like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither and they prosper in all that they do. See, when we meditate upon God's word, just like it says in the scripture, we prosper in all that we do. Now, does that mean that it makes life easier? No, but it means God is with us and we spend time in his word meditating upon the scriptures and we let it correct us. We let it guide us. We let it move us. Man, God continues to do something special in and through us. Now you're saying to yourself, okay, Vince, I get it. There's a prize inside. I've got to get inside the word. I need to read it daily. Like, I, I, I get that. Like, I need more than just cereal in my life. Like, I get those three clear things. But like, actually, how do I do that? Well, some of y'all need soap. No, not the soap you bathe with, but some of you do need to bathe because you have not bathed all year yet. But soap is an acronym that stands for Scripture, Observations, Application, and Prayer. Scripture. That means first, you have to pick up your Bible, whether it's the YouVersion Bible app, and read the scripture. Now, you don't have to read the whole Bible in one setting, but just pick a few verses. There are lots of amazing Bible plans you can follow. Matter of fact, there's even one that goes along with this message, and you read it. And after you get done reading, you observe what's happening in there. Now, what does that mean to observe observation? Well, when you read it, what do you notice? Or what was happening during that time? What do you think about when you're reading? Observation, in other words, pay attention to what's happening in the surroundings of the text that you're reading. The next is application. In other words, how can you take what you just read and apply it to your life? So today it might talk about being generous in the scripture that you read. So you think to yourself, hey, how can I be generous to someone today. And lastly, prayer. God, I just pray that you would help me be more generous. So not simply for just helping us get clean, but it also helps us as we navigate in God's word. Again, scriptures, observation, application, prayer. So Vince, but why all this? Why soap? Why does it matter? Why do I do all this? And I think that can be found in John 20, 30 through 31. The disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs in addition to the ones recorded in the book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that believing in him, you will have life by the power of his name. What I love about God's word, what I love about the Bible, it's a written love letter. It's a written guidance to you. And every day you pick up God's word, whether it's your paper Bible, or your YouVersion Bible app, we're reminded of the love that God has for us, of how he sent his one and only son for us. Because as the Bible tells us that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. And so when you read God's word, you're reminded why you invite your friends to church. You're reminded why you serve. You're reminded why you give. You're reminded why you're patient, why you're loving, why you're caring. And most importantly, you're reminded of the love of God. Let's take time and let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we love you and thank you, God. We thank you not only that you sent your son, God, but we thank you, God, that you gave us your word, God. We thank you that it corrects us, God, and it reminds us of your love, God. We thank you, God, that it helps to transform us, God, and make us more like you. Now, there are those of you in here today as we remain in attitude, a prayer 
who would say, you know what, Vince, I just have not been in God's word like I should. Maybe I pick up my Bible once in a random blue moon or as about as often as the big game comes on TV. And you're saying, you know what, Vince, today I want to make that commitment to hop into God's word, to begin to read it for myself and understand who he is. And if that's you, simply just put it in the chat or just raise your hand right now so I can pray for you. Father, I thank you for each person who's either typed in the chat or raised their hand and said they want to commit to read God's word. God, I pray that you give them the strength. God, I pray that you give them the wisdom, the tools and the resources to kind of to make your word a priority in their life. Now, there's a different set of you that are in here today. Maybe you've been coming to Switch for a while or maybe you came for the fun, and the activities and the games. But before this, you don't have a relationship with Jesus. You had never heard how God sent his son Jesus to this earth. You didn't know that, hey, we've all fallen short. We've all sinned. We've all messed up. We've all made mistakes and we've all fallen short of who God is. But because of who Jesus is, because on that cross, he paid the ultimate sacrifice by paying and giving of his life that we can now enter a relationship with him. Because see, Jesus did not stay dead. It was three days later that he was risen from the grave so that we could have that relationship with him. And for some of you right now, you feel that tug, you feel that thing inside of you that says, yes, Jesus, I want to enter into a relationship with you. And if that's you, it's simple. Just raise your hand right now or enter it into the chat. Now, it's not this prayer that saves you, but repeat it after me. Now, we're not going to do it alone. So everyone together, dear Jesus, I ask that you come into my life, that you change me, make me new, that you forgive me of my sins, that you teach me to love others as you first love me. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Come on. I'm so excited for you and with God. This is just the start, the beginning of what God wants to do in your life.